Today I've got this nice Putnam integral. And this is actually a double integral, which is nice because I think that doesn't commonly show up on the Putnam exam. Okay, so let's look at our goal. We want to evaluate the double integral from 0 to a and 0 to b of e to the maximum of b squared times x squared comma a squared times y squared. So what I mean by max here is in the region where b squared x squared is larger, we'll take that to be the value of the exponent. And when a squared times y squared is larger, we'll take that to be the value of the exponent. And we're doing it in the order dy dx. So I want to notice that as this stands, it's an iterated integral. So perhaps we want to turn it into a double integral instead of an iterated integral and think about what we can do with that region of integration. Okay, so let's see maybe how to do that. I'm gonna introduce some notation really quick. I'm gonna set r equal to the rectangle, zero comma a cross zero comma b. So we'll draw a picture of that, but that happens in the xy plane. Furthermore, I'll set f of x equal to this function that we're playing with. So e to the maximum of this stuff. So we've got b squared, x squared, a squared, y squared, like that. Okay, so now let's see what we've got going down here in our domain. So like I said, we are in the xy plane. We're integrating over a region in the xy plane and the x values go from zero to a. So I'll just go ahead and put a here on the x-axis because that's gonna be important. Then our y values go from zero to b. So I'll put b here on the y-axis again because that will be important. And then let's draw a picture of r. So the outline of r goes like this. And then of course, it really is everything which is in the interior there. So I'll shade it like that. So our goal can be rewritten as a double integral instead of an iterated integral like this. So it's gonna be the double integral over r of f dA where I'm doing a differential area component instead of dy dx. Obviously those are pretty much the same when you're in rectangular coordinates. Okay, now I wanna notice that there's kind of an obvious breakdown of this rectangle into two pieces. One piece where b squared times x squared is bigger and one piece where a squared times y squared is bigger. So let's maybe look through that and notice that the important place to start off looking is where these are the same. So notice that b squared x squared equals a squared y squared when bx equals a y. But bx equals a y is just a line. So it's the line y equals b over a times x. You know, that goes from the origin to this corner of our rectangle. So I'll just write this right here. This is the line ay equals bx or y equals b over a times x. Notice this guy right here is the point a comma b. Now like I said you might want to write this as y equals b over a times x if you need to. Okay. Now next, let's notice that down here, all of the x values are bigger than the y values, but this scaling is also gonna keep those things bigger. So here, the maximum of b squared, x squared, and a squared, y squared is b squared, x squared. So down here, our function looks like e to the b squared, x squared. Then up here, it's the opposite. We have e to the a squared, y squared. Okay, nice. Then furthermore, we might as well give some names to these two regions where these two parts of the function kind of dominate. 
and I'll let those be triangle one and triangle two. So let's call this bit right here, maybe triangle one, then we'll call this bit right here, triangle two, like that. Now we can take this and rewrite it as the integral over triangle one of F dA plus the integral over triangle two of F dA. Okay, nice. But F takes on the form e to the b squared x squared on triangle one and e to the a squared y squared on triangle two. And then furthermore, we can change those into iterated integrals. So let's do that. So on triangle one, we can write that as the integral from zero to a. So we'll do the x integral on the outside and then the integral from zero to b over a times x. So that's the y integral on the inside. So notice we go from the x-axis up to this line right here, but that line is defined by that equation like we talked about before. Then f has this value here, so this is e to the b squared x squared, and then like I said, we're doing dy dx. Okay, nice. Now let's see what we have for the other one. So this is gonna be the integral from zero to b, and then the integral from the y-axis out to this same line, but we need to solve that in terms of y. So that would be x equals a over b times y. So this is gonna go from zero to a over b times y. Now we have e to the a squared y squared dx dy. So our integration is happening in the other order. Now we're pretty much ready to finish it off. So we can do these inner integrals. So we're left with the integral from zero to a of y times e to the b squared x squared evaluated from zero to b over a times x. And that's an x integral plus the integral from zero to b and then x times the integral from, sorry, the function e to the a squared y squared evaluated from zero to a over b times y. Okay, so let's see what we get when we plug those in. So plugging zero in obviously just zeros it out. And then plugging in b over a times x, we're really just multiplies by x. We can take a b over a out front. So that's gonna give us b over a times the integral from zero to a of x times x times e to the b squared x squared dx plus a over b times the integral from zero to b of y times e to the a squared y squared dy like that. Okay, so that would be this bottom one plus this top one. Okay, so we're kind of running out of room. Let's maybe get rid of the extra stuff and we'll finish it off. Okay, on the last board, we got this down to the following sum of two single integrals. These are fairly straightforward using u substitution. So maybe here we could let u equal b squared x squared. That means du is two times b squared times x dx, like that. But now we can see all of the leftover stuff in here, b times x times dx, and maybe solve for that. So we have bx dx is equal to one over two b du. Okay, so let's see, that's gonna take this, this, and this and replace it with one over two b du. And this part right here is being replaced with u. So let's see how we've transformed this integral now. This is gonna be one over two a b. We have the integral from zero to something. We'll talk about that in just a second of e to the u du. Now what's that something? Well, let's see. When x is equal to a, u is equal to a squared times b squared. So we get a squared times b squared. Okay. Now let's see what we've got for this other bit. It's going to be essentially the same thing though. So let's say we let this equal t. Well, that means that dt 
is equal to 2a squared y dy, like that. But that means that this a times y times dy can be replaced with 1 over 2a dt. But then when all the dust settles, you'll see that you get exactly this integral again, but just with t's in there. So we might as well make the dummy substitution of just t for u, and that means we're adding this integral to itself, which means we can get rid of this extra 2 in the denominator. But now it's pretty easy to finish it off by taking this antiderivative and plugging in the endpoints. That'll leave us with a, b, quantity squared minus 1 over a, b. And that's a good place to stop.